British Medical Journal and others that in the four and a half year staged Western backed civil war in Syria, 350 plus thousand people have been killed. Upwards of 200 plus thousand of those being innocent civilians. Most of the casualties being carried out by Al Qaeda or Al Qaeda IS affiliated groups. Almost 100% of the Syrian Free Army that John McCain and others have met with and financed and given more than $10 million of U.S. taxpayer money so far, almost all of them are Al-Qaeda. They fly Al-Qaeda flags, you name it. Now we learn the girlfriend of three of the supposed Paris shooters has fled through Turkey, even though she's on a no-fly list, and was able to get days ago into Syria, their home base, where they control about a third of the country in the east uh, of Syria into the west of Iraq. Huge convoys that invaded Iraq were allowed to invade. Nothing was done. Now they airdrop them weapons. And now we learn parachuters trained, and we have these clips, with underwear bomber Patsy. Evidence reveals CIA, FBI complicit in allowing parachuting to happen. Now we have Colonel Schaefer from years ago who ran the unit hunting bin Laden, and he was twice not allowed to kill him, uh, saying that, yes, Amar al is a double, triple agent of our government. He's the guy that ran Hassan, that ran the underwear bomber, and that is now running these idiots who were allowed to have rocket launchers and machine guns and had Facebooks planning terror attacks. But we need more cybersecurity and 10,000 troops on the streets of France and troops here. And Obama has now introduced legislation, he's pushing for it, that is SOPA and CISPA by a new name. That's the headline, Infowars.com. That story just went live. So you can see the new leg of, of financing and opening up radical Islamicists. Now... Kurt Haskell is a successful lawyer along with his wife, and he survived the Christmas Day underwear bombing and witnessed it all a month and a half after he said he saw a U.S. person get him on the plane without proper identification. It was admitted in Congress. We played those clips yesterday. I wanted to get him on. He's now run for Congress and failed, tried to fix things that way, left Detroit. He's moved to Costa Rica. Quite frankly, I want to go join him. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I've, I've pledged to stay here until the end. As Churchill said, we shall go on to the end. Whatever the cost may be, we shall defend our island. We shall never surrender. Well, I will go on to the end, whatever the cost may be. I will defend the republic. I will go on to the end. I will never surrender. And I'm not saying he surrendered. He does a weekly radio show, updates his website. Uh, a lot of expats are down there. Beautiful place to go. I want to move down there, but... Uh, I just, uh, just, I just got to stay in Texas and be sick from the cedar pollen. Uh, but uh, we go now to Kurt Haskell. I'm going to give him the floor to talk about the latest events, Paris, what he saw, what happened to him. I got to tell you, man, you, 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 you were never fat, but you've lost a lot of weight, and you look like Dana White of the UFC now. Don't beat me up. Uh, how long have you been in Costa Rica? It looks like it's been good for you. You lost a lot of weight. You look like you're 10 years younger. Yeah, uh, eight months now. Yeah. You know, it, it helps staying in shape when you don't work and you get the proper amount of rest and the proper diet. And, you know, when you go to the gym every day, you can give it your all. So it helps a lot. Well, you got the floor, brother, for this segment and the next. Uh, you want right. to start back at the beginning of the underwear bombing you witnessed? You want to? Well, just a, a couple quick thoughts on that. I, I really want to talk about Paris more, but um, for your listeners that don't know, you know, I, I spent two years and 2,000 hours of my own time investigating the underwear bomber case. So my conclusions that I finally drew in that case weren't just made on a whim. I thoroughly put a lot of my own time into figuring out why this happened to us. And what my ultimate conclusion was, was that the CIA put the underwear bomber on our plane intentionally, knowing that they had provided him a defective bomb that would light a small fire on our plane, but knowing that it didn't have a detonator that would blow up and blow the plane uh, out of the sky. So uh, with Umar thinking that himself, he was a terrorist, but of course, you know, he was very uneducated and never would have had the capability to pull off a plot such as this uh, without CIA help. And of course, he had a defective bomb. So uh, there was never really any threat that the uh, 
plane would go down. So that was my ultimate conclusion. Now, now we have uh, the media saying that the parachuters are tied to the underwear bomber, and one of them was actually his roommate, apparently while being radicalized somewhere in Europe. Well. You know, that's a that's a big red flag to me because I, I proved the underwear bomber was a false flag. And there was, as you mentioned, admissions in Congress that he was put on the plane intentionally. So to me, the underwear bomber is a proof false flag. Tying the parachuting into that proves that one is also a false flag. But, you know, we have a lot of other questionable things with the parachuting uh, that tie into other false flags or corrupt plots you know the one that's a big red flag to me is the dropped id card i mean come on where did we see this before at the world trade center 9 11 uh you know with the drop passport found in the burning rubble of the world trade center so to me that's another huge red flag what that tells me is uh whoever put that there is pointing the finger incorrectly at muslims so what that tells me is muslims did not perpetrate this attack at all it's it's meant to create a false story much of the information we're being fed by the mainstream media in these attacks will be intentionally false to paint a false narrative so that's a big one for me because we've seen it before with another fake attack 9 11. uh not saying nobody died in 9 11 of course not what i'm saying is the wrong people were meant to be uh the patsies in that case so here we have it again so muslim, what we take out of that muslims did not commit this act or at least they weren't the major planners so we have that and then we just have the utter uh we have the ties to the underwear bomber we have that too and then we just have the utter unbelievability of the story so uh, let's start out with the story i'll go through some points that i just think are ridiculous they uh they go into charlie hebdo offices they have a woman hostage they take outside to get in fine okay believable next we're told they instead of demanding that she take them to the charlie hebdo office they go to the front desk and ask where the office is what this is just ridiculous you know nonsense this would never happen in real life you point the gun at the woman's head and you say take me to the office you don't go and ask for directions at the front desk so ridiculous not not credible to me okay next we have they go upstairs. They are already knew uh, an important meeting was apparently going on. All the major players from the magazine were in a meeting, which they do only once a week, I guess, and the rest of the week they work at home. So they knew something was going on ahead of time. And then we're told they call out the names of the people they want to shoot. Not really what Muslim extremists do. Muslim extremists would open the door and shoot everybody in the room. So that that doesn't sit right with me either but they also told, wouldn't flee after the attack they'd wait and die in a uh, glorious jihad right or maybe blow up the whole building you know and something like that in a suicide bomb that that's more in line with what crazy muslims would do so we're told that they have a precision attack here killing the names on the list okay if you believe that fine but then how do 11 people get wounded in the charlie hebdo offices I mean, how many people were wounded in the, the Sandy Hook shooting? Three, 26 dead, three wounded in Sandy Hook, and here in a preci precision shooting, 10 dead, 11 wounded? No. So somebody's lying there, or I don't know what. It's conflicting stories. So that tells me we're not being told the real story by somebody. Okay. Then they leave. Fine. But now there's only evidence of two. I mean, there's video of when they leave outside, they get into two shootouts with cops, fine. But where's guy number three? You know, we're told right away that there's three of them. He's nowhere to be seen anywhere. He's not in the escape car. He's not in the building. The witnesses don't see him. As a matter of fact, one of the witnesses in Charlie Hebdo said one of the perpetrators had blue eyes. And the three suspects' name all have brown eyes. Lo and behold, one of them's a kid, and he's in school during the shooting, and it, it's impossible. And now we have the police involved. chief that was involved investigating, killing himself while writing the report. Of yeah, of course. Stay there. I mean, I know they've got radical Muslims. To me, it looks like they just financed them to do this. You're saying it may be totally fake. The human body is extraordinary. 
Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract, paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise, can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of HB extract. It's extremely effective and it starts working in just days. Visit hbextract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers. And we've never increased our price in over 10 years. That makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Call 866-295-5305 or go to hbextract.com. Mom, I can't do my math homework. I just don't get it. I hate math. <sighs> I've always tried to be a good mother, but when it came to Jamie's math, I was at a loss. Then a friend told me about Math Made Easy DVDs. Concepts are simplified in an easy way to follow and review, and students can learn at their own pace in the convenience of home. Listen, in the frustration, call Math Made Easy. Call now, 1-800-USA-MATH. That's 1-800-872-6284. Or visit us at mathmadeeasy.com. Managing your business and customers isn't easy, huh? Snapforce Customer Relationship Software may be just what you need. Snapforce CRM is a software solution that helps you manage everything important about your customers, from sales to marketing to service and support. All of your customer information is right there at your fingertips for easy access. It's time to take control of your business in a snap. Get your free trial at snapforce.com. That's S-N-A-P-F-O-R-C-E.com. Snapforce.com. The experts are clear. Sunlight, purified water, healthy non-GMO food, and having a good attitude is essential to a healthy immune system. But I go further with Super Nascent Iodine X2 from InfoWarsLife.com. 50% stronger than our original and revolutionary nascent iodine formula, coming from a deep earth crystal source that no other supplier has. Most other forms of iodine come from seaweed in areas plagued by Fukushima and other contaminants. Not our iodine. It comes from over 200 million year old crystal salt deposits and is tested and proven to be completely pure. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today. See the informational videos. Read the information there compiled. And for a limited time, when you use promo code NOW at checkout, you get an additional 5% off the entire family of InfoWarsLife.com products. Secure your Survival Shield X2 today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. in school today that 60% of our bodies are made of water. Good thing we have the Berkey system. It's the cleanest, best water ever. Mom says it's because the Berkey's filtration system cleans out the bad stuff and leaves only pure, delicious water. I know, right? You love it too. Yeah, I'm thirsty too. Let's go get some. Get Berkey clean water by calling 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Or visit GoBerkey.com. The CDC just announced flu vaccines may have the wrong strain of flu virus, you may not be protected. Whatever your lifestyle, your immune system is critical, and Immudine provides your immune support. Doctor recommended, stimulant free, and not found in pharmacies. Go to Immudine.com to find out more or to place an order, or call 866-257-8668. That's I-M-M-U-D-Y-N-E.com or 866-257-8668. Remember, Immudine is key support for your immune system. It's the cult of personality. Old Obama, he was going to give you free houses, free cars, free everything. All he gave the black community was double their unemployment. But he gave people the pride. And I hope that uh, Republicans out there don't have pride if we get a Chris Christie or a Jeb Bush. And go, well, at least it isn't Obama. Or at least it isn't Hillary. Well, I don't like Jeb, but he's better than Hillary. I don't know. It'd be better to have Hillary because folks are really angry and sick of it. She couldn't get jack squat done. See, I'm thinking about beating these people, not being played by them. If the system wants Jeb Bush over Hillary, there's a reason for that. 
that's another debate. We're going to have uh, Mr. Haskell with us 10 minutes into the next segment. Then I'll go to your phone calls, uh, Blake and Truth and uh, Bobby and Michael and uh, Wild Man. We'll get to all of you. So please stay there. I want to hear your comments. I see people have some pretty interesting comments like gas prices, works in a refinery. Let's talk about the economy. That's Wild Man. Blake wants to talk about the Paris shooting. Truth Raider wants to talk about hacking and 9-11. Uh, Blake wants to talk about, um, Bobby wants to talk about collapse of the dollar. That's all coming up. But finishing up with questions about Paris, when you say it, Muslims didn't do it, I would agree the West has financed the takeover of regions, giving the weapons to radical jihadis that do come out of Saudi Arabia. They're allowing these people to fly back and forth out of the West. They're recruiting Western terror armies to now attack us to complete the police state takeover. That's all clear. But are you saying from your research, you're a smart guy. I mean, Mutala wanted to call you in the trial until they blocked it. I mean, we, I mean, we shouldn't forget that. And what you said got confirmed in Congress. So I know you're an accurate guy, but your gut really tells you these guys may not have even been involved? Or what are you saying? No, let, let, I want to be really clear on it. Cause it's kind of complicated how, how I see these going down. I see that the U.S. and, and or Israel, however you want to take it, I, most of the plots, I think, were, have been CIA plots. This particular plot, I think, is a Mossad plot. I can get into why if you want me to. But anyway, I think what they're doing, they're taking these stupid, uneducated Muslims. They're handpicking some. And they're having undercover CIA, Mossad agents, whoever, uh, radicalize them in Europe, believing that the undercover agents are actually Al-Qaeda, ISIS, whoever. And they're taking them in these uh, camps, whatever you want to call them. They're having them make videos. And when the time comes that they're needed to be a patsy, then all of a sudden they get a call from bin Laden, al Laki, whoever the most holiest the CIA agent would be at that time to demand that they go to do their mission. And then they handpick whichever ones, you know, best fit that particular mission. And so, by the way, we know that's what they've done in the past with Hassan, the underwear bomber, the rest of them. So you're absolutely correct. right. And I believe correct. that's what went on. So it's not completely accurate to say Muslims aren't involved. They do carry out the attack. Some of them at least parts of them are real, not all of them. But to say they're, the Muslims are doing the attacks is not correct, because without uh, training, financing, uh, planning of the events, the inside information, none of these events would take place. They're yeah, they're the, the useful the idiots that, that are dumb yes. enough to carry it out. Yes, that's all they are. But it's not completely correct to say Muslims aren't involved, because they are. But without that helping hand, there would be none of these attacks. Sure. Well, no, I totally agree with your analysis, and that's pretty much what I see going on here. I, I don't. Right. I mean, I know I've seen UPI and AP and Jerusalem Post headlines that Israel created fake Al Qaeda groups in the in 1992 to counter Hamas, um, and that's on record that Israel has staged false bombings on itself. That's not me. That's the Jerusalem right. Post and Haritz. So I I don't put it past Israel or elements of it to get sympathy. Just like a black dorm might burn a cross out front to get, you know, extra money or something. I get people doing things for sympathy, people wounding themselves. It's very common in psychology. How do you say it's CIA or Mossad? This one, I think, is Mossad, and here's why. Okay, so you have the, the France vote to recognize Palestine as a state, uh, which allows them to go into the International Criminal Court now and bring proceedings against Israel. Now, before that vote, uh, Netanyahu uh, threatened France, saying if they voted for this, there would be grave consequences. So let's think about what grave consequences from Israel to France would be. Well, obviously, they're not going to go bomb France. They're not that open about it. They would do something via the Mossad. So, you know, if, if I threaten your family, Alex, and say if, if you ha take a particular action, and then you do that, and then 12 members of your family end up dead shortly thereafter, who are the police going to come look after? Me. I'll be suspect number one. Stay correct? there. Keep rolling this out. It's intriguing. Kurt sure. Haskell, a lawyer uh, and a patriot, smart guy, uh, helped blow the underwear bombing wide open, literally, uh, is our guest right now. Stay with us. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. 
Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Another major health threat. This one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L, BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. When cells become toxic, they die early and aging sets in. No one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. Just one of the key compounds, BioPQQ, is backed by major clinical studies. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? We now have the synergistic solution. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard. Even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food and our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. Listening to an Infowars.com frontline report. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. We're just stating facts here. Kurt witnessed the CIA put the drug to Mutalib on the plane, so a firecracker went off in his pants, so they could put naked body scanners in the airports and train us to be slaves. The later came out in Congress. A double, triple agent of the CIA, Amar al Awlaki, handles almost every one of these terrorists. And they're allowed to travel even when they're on no-fly list. It's, it, it's the same story over and over again. The motive by totalitarians in government, by despotic pushers, is to allow these attacks to take place and to stir them up. And they usually find the same narcissistic, egomaniac, low IQ dum-dums to do it. Just like the FBI's been caught, the New York Times has reported on it, hatching almost every major terror plot. Sometimes with people with 70 and 75 IQs, mentally retarded people. Remember the FBI famously, it's got to be like 10 years ago, it's nine years ago, 2006, got a bunch of uh, black street kids who were homeless, and 20 down to about 16, who were Christians. They were pothead Rastafarians. They, they dealt pot. And for a year and a half, the FBI got them a warehouse, gave them hundreds of thousands of dollars, in some cases a month, 
all the weed they could smoke, all the beer, big screen TVs, and had a fake Rastafarian lead them and say, we must convert to Islam or I won't give you more money and more weed and we must blow up the FBI building in Miami. And the news was like, a virtual army to take down America and destroy everything. Well, it's been, and then it came out in court. They could not tie their shoelaces. And a bunch of them were on welfare and were rated as mentally retarded. And the same story repeats time and time again. The guys that drove the truck bomb in 93, and I had the fe former federal informant Ahmad Salam on earlier this week. One of them had a 71 IQ and one had an 80 IQ. 70 is mentally retarded. So you need to understand, now the guys I saw doing the shooting did not look stupid. So I don't know what's going on. I just cannot believe how bold all this is. But look how everything's rolling out, how the PR is all prepared. When you have a terror attack and they don't have a bunch of legislation ready, and there's not a big push, sometimes it's a real attack. But when it's all ready to go and you see the rollout, that's the big sign for me. So you'd gotten up to the point of talking about how they recruit them, how they set them up, how they use Yemen and, 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 and other areas captured in Syria as training grounds. They have these handlers. That's on record. They're allowed to fly even when they're on no-fly list because other good agencies and subgroups identify them and put them on list. And then the higher-ups are like, oh, no, let them travel. Please continue. And then I want to talk about why you decided to evacuate the United States and how you're locking Costa Rica and some of your views on the world. Kurt Haskell, again, a survivor of the underwear bombing and blew the whistle on it with his wife, also a lawyer. Go ahead. Sure. So I, I give, I've given the motive for Mossad to do this. Now, I'll give you the evidence that I think shows that they did it. So first of all, we have the dropped ID card pointing to a Muslim doing this, which I think is nonsense. Okay, but along with the ID card, various uh, evidence used in the shooting was there that they, they allegedly used to pick DNA off of, and within a couple hours, they run it through. Uh, DNA database, and now they have names and pictures of all three suspects within a couple hours they're putting on TV. Utterly nonsense. But where did we see this before? We saw it on 9-11. So, but the reason for that was that there was a very quick need to point the finger away from Israel because, what I said earlier, because of the vote that directly points the finger to Israel as being the most likely perpetrator of this attack. So we have the immediate need to identify Muslims and show their pictures. Okay, next, uh, we have Kula Lobby. Now, there's no evidence that I've seen anywhere that shows Kula Lobby involved in the shooting whatsoever. The third guy, he's the black guy, you know, then there's the two Kuachi brothers. But all the videos of the shooting only show two guys. So what, what does Kula Lobby attack? Well, he goes into a kosher grocery store, of course. Okay completely what I would expect. Uh, while he's in there, he does two miraculous things. He talks to a radio station, hangs up the phone, but he doesn't hang it up all the way. So the radio station can listen to what he's saying there. And then he has a phone call with CNN. Are you kidding me? CNN, while he's holding hostages. So there, it's utterly unbelievable. But what he says is he says he's a co-conspirator with the Kouachi brothers, and he's part of ISIS. So what this does is this ties in Kula Lobby, attack on Jewish people, kosher store, with the, the two brothers that allegedly perpetrated Charlie Hebdo. So what we have, it's a subliminal message here. Israel did not do this. Here are the Muslims, and Israel would not kill four people. The kosher grocery store that Kula Lobby is alleged to do. And how do we find out the evidence? that Kula Lobby is tied to the Kwachi brothers? Why, it's his phone call with CNN. So, which brings into, into question the, the uh, where we've seen this before, the fake phone calls on 9-11. So we, we have another fake phone call here to give evidence tying him in where he does not otherwise belong. So that is the extra oomph, if you will, that Israel did not do this because four Jewish people died in the attack at a kosher store. So there was a little extra push needed here. To, first, you point the immediate finger away from Israel, and then you give it the little extra push of four Jewish people dying with a guy who wasn't involved in the shooting in any way, except 
by this phone call uh, with CNN where he admits he's a co-conspirator. So that's how I tie in the Mossad in this one. I think that's most likely. And then the last part of it is you have Netanyahu kind of bringing himself center stage in France, you know, appearing at a synagogue where all the members sing the national anthem for him and it's all over the media. And we have Obama taking the opposite tactic, staying away, staying in the U.S., not going to the March of World Leaders, which, which tells me this is not Obama's deal. This is Netanyahu's deal. He's pushing it up. He's playing it up to the max, and Obama's kind of stepping aside. So that, those are the reasons I think this is a Mossad plot. Well, I've had former famous Mossad commanders on the show that talked about declassified examples where they would tap into undersea cables and stuff and then send terrorist transmissions over them to even blame countries on their cables, uh, things like that. I mean, I'm not a hate, hater just of Israel to hate Israel because all major countries engage in this stuff. What I'm saying is I don't want to be identified with those that their whole religion is blaming Israel if somebody falls on a banana peel. But that said, Israel is very famous uh, for staging terror attacks uh, that were then to be blamed on political uh, enemies. They got caught in uh, uh, Egypt famously doing that. I mean, that's in mainstream Israeli papers. Uh, Israel was in UPI, did admit they created fake Al-Qaeda groups and did bombings at key political times to mess up the, the peace process. Uh, Israel uh, has also in Iraq and in Spain, after World War II, they would blow up mosques Blame it on other groups to make Jews move to Israel so that they could then be controlled by the political parties there. And so the tactics being used uh, are the same ones that our own government's been caught uh, engaging in. And so I don't know what you do, though, when you're faced with real radical Muslims that the West is armed. And Israel's been involved in that as well. Uh, they're in the Golan Heights aiding the Free Syrian Army. France is involved. Everybody's involved. What do you do, Kurt, when we know governments do this, including the Russian government stages stuff? I mean, this is an old tactic. Uh, it's in British manuals. It's in Army manuals. WikiLeaks released those. The Army admitted those were real and, and prosecuted Manning for it. They teach Army captains who are in uh, covert operations in certain areas how to do false flags. That's in the manual. Well, I've interviewed Green Berets, uh, colonels. He got sued over it, but he won the lawsuit. Who admitted that all oh, torture is not new? We used to do it with you know with electricity. We carried it in our field pack. I tortured people all the time. Uh, I just think there's a naivete out there about what's really going on uh, and it, how widespread it is. So what do we do then about these tactics that we know are taking place? And again, there is though now a new giant army of radical Muslims that have been created. So the question is, why wouldn't they just order and deploy some of them into attack? And I guess the answer is they just did. Well, then why would you then need to set them up and have somebody else do it if you've got an army that's willing to do it? Why make the operation so complex? Well, they want to have a they want to have limited damage and they want to be able to control the situation. I mean, we don't even know, honestly, if anyone in Charlie Hebdo even died. We don't know. There's no evidence of this. So uh, for all that we know, this could be another uh, Sandy Hook event where it's very questionable whether anyone died at all. So, but it's to control the narrative. I mean, if you send in real radicalized Muslims, who knows what they're going to do? They may blow up entire buildings, uh, suicide bombs all over the place. And you might be talking about a mass casualty event. And then the government looks really bad getting uh, for a while defeated by it or absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not the goal. The goal is to have a minor uh, terrorist attack with limited casualties that can be exploited majorly in the media. That's the goal. Well, let's not forget, and I went there days after it happened and made it you know, a big part of my film, Terror Storm. They bombed the subway in two areas and the, and the uh, train, the train in two places and the bus in one area. The leader of it was MI6 and was protected. And then Netanyahu was like 300 yards from where the first bomb went off. And they had visor consultancy with uh, running a drill of the exact trains and exact bus hit at the same time in the exact place. 
That is impossible. So they also run drills in case any other operatives get caught. They just say it's part of the drill, Kurt. I mean, really, these false flags are so obvious. So I just have trouble believing it's always a false flag. But, but then the evidence just keeps emerging that it is. Well, what, what my definition of a false flag is the event is blamed on someone other than the ones really pulling the strings. So that's my definition. There may be people dying. Uh, there may not be. It may be mostly as told or partly as told, but what we're never told is who are the people really pulling the strings. So that, to me, is the definition of, of false flag. But what's extra troubling to me in this plot is, is the tying into the underwear bomber. Because the underwear bomber case, in my opinion, was definitely a CIA plot. And this case is most likely a Mossad plot. So what we have here, to me, is a definite link between Mossad and CIA in the grooming of patsies, and, which tells me there's some kind of coordination going on between those two governments in the implementation of these false flag attacks, which is a very scary thought, if you ask me. Well, what should we call this video when we post it and do an article about it tomorrow? Um, terror survivor? Uh, Paris, an inside job, or uh, would you say uh, expert uh, Paris attack Mossad operation? I mean, I don't know if with the circumstantial evidence, it all points to false flag. It all points to the proxy cutouts. We know they were allowed to fly. We know they're being trained as the CIA handler. Why would it be a CIA handler and now it's a Mossad op, even though Israel certainly has capitalized not letting a good crisis go to waste i mean i'll blame israel in a second if they just red-handed admit it and then, and then israel's declassified you know they blew up hotels and blamed it on the egyptians or blew up uh, nightclubs and blamed it on jihadis i mean that's declassified so i mean i'm not shying away from blaming israel i think now you got to look at the cia because it's their handler that was over these guys and it was western governments letting these idiots fly around um, I mean, I would have to say Mossad then working in concert with Western intelligence. Could be. Could very well be. You know, I, I just look at the evidence and see what is the most likely outcome. I, I don't know 100%, and none of us do, but to me, that's the most likely outcome. So then the next question is, well, are they working in concert with the CIA government? Or the CIA, was this a, a joint operation? But th with Obama not going to the March of the Leaders and all the other uh, factors I mentioned, I think this is a Mossad plot, which to me means that the two governments are working hand in hand in the grooming of the patsies. Or, uh, you know, they kind of have a, a, a kind of a pool or, you know, a school. For the training of well, the sure, patsies. we know Camp X-Ray is a school for jihadi commanders. That's now on record. Uh, it, it is just totally insane, and I don't think we can safely say who's behind it. I think what you're pointing at has a lot of evidence to it, and certainly a, a major suspect, if not prime suspect, just because of the motive and also some of the other uh, staging of things that stinks to high heaven. I just know this, not one but two passports survived the fiery infernos of 9-11 and were found that day on the ground. That's pure bull. And the fact that it's been done again, I mean, does this never end, Kurt, how obvious this is? Well, the sad thing is it's only obvious to, what, 10 or 20 percent of the population. That's that's what's really sad. The rest are, are brainwashed and won't even consider what's going on when it's right before their eyes. That's that's what's really sad. Well, more people are becoming aware. You're already a smart lawyer, but now you were a listener and we're investigating 9-11 and then you saw it happen with the underwear bomber and your story got proven true, came out in Congress twice, and I, it just... It just shows you how much trouble we're in. In closing, we, we're going to go to break and come back and take a few calls from Blake and others. Uh, Kurt, I'd like to invite you back soon sometime to be a guest host when I'm out of town with some of the uh, fill-in crew, uh, like David Knight, doing a good job with you. But, but in closing, in one minute, why did you split the U.S., and how do you like Costa Rica? Well, I love Costa Rica, let me tell you. It's a, it's a really great country. Why did I leave the U.S.? The reason I left the U.S. is a very simple one. I wanted to live in a free country, not where you live for free, but a country where you can have freedom. You know, I had my life very negatively affected by a false flag attack, and I ran for Congress hoping to make a change in the people. 
did not have enough sense to vote me in someone that would actually represent the interests of the people against uh, this corrupt government. So I did not want to live in a country anymore where we have such a corrupt government doing false flag attacks that hurt the people and a majority of the people that can't see what's good for them when it's right before their eyes. So it's a combination of all those things. And this, to me, this is the best country in the world. Well, I know there's a lot of CIA and FBI expats down there, so maybe they'll leave that as somewhat free, like Switzerland, because uh, I've looked at Costa Rica as an emergency bug out, and I'm going to be looking a lot closer. Not that I'm going to ever leave, but I may have to get my family out or do something like that at some time, just because this... I'll go to a FEMA camp, but not my kids. And it's all going that way, folks, when they false flag it and blame it on the Patriots. That's what all this is a build-up to when they're done with the Muslims. Kurt Haskell, uh, Godspeed. Uh, give, give folks your website. Well, I co-host a uh, radio show Monday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern on freedomizerradio.com, and it's called The Proof Negative Show. You can listen to me there every Monday. All right, great job. God bless you. Stay with us. Attention now.